I'm Kainty on the Tech Pro, and today we are going to start with part two, setting up our application in Spring Boot. Hopefully, by now you've already installed Spring Tools Youth in your system. So let's go to start building this application. I'd like to remind you to subscribe to my channel, and that way you motivate me to keep making these lessons. And also feel free to leave me a comment if you have any challenges. Reach me personally, and I'm going to be there to help you. So hit the subscribe button and also activate notifications so that you don't miss any update. All right, so let's set up the application. So I'm going to go to Start New Spring Startup Project. Spring Startup Project. I'm going to call it Hibernate Demo. I already put the name there. An artifact Hibernate Demo as well. Description and package. So these settings are okay. You want to change them? It's okay for you too. So I'm going to go next, and I'm going to choose Spring Data JPA and Spring Web Starter. These two dependencies are necessary to select. For now, so I'm going to go next and go to finish. So we are going to be creating three classes. So I'm going to keep these classes open so that we know exactly what we are doing. So we are going to be creating three classes in the models package. So um, so this hibernate demo is right here. Go to SRC main Java. And go to .ktg, .hibernate demo. Right click on it and say new and choose new class. So we are going to create post, uh, location, and user. So I'm going to create, start by creating post. And I'm going to put it in a new package called models. All right, put it in a new package called models. I'm going to hit enter. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to, okay, before I build up this class, let me just create the two more classes. So I'm going to say new, I'm going to call it location. And the last one is user, new class, and I'm going to call it a user. All right, so at this point, uh, you are going to, for post we have ID, post date and user ID and details. So we are going to create, take note of what I do. So I'm going to create private integer ID, private, this is for user this time. So private string, first, uh, first name, always start with the, the field names is lowercase. First name, private in, uh, string, last name, private, Location, location. So now in this case, you don't say location ID, you say location. So I'm going to actually shift this. This is what we are doing. The other one is for relational database, but this one is for ORM or for code force, where we have to build, use ORM, which is Hibernate, to build these tables or these entities. So location, um, and then what else? Email, private, string, email. All right, so at uh, this point, what you need to do is to generate the getters and the setters as well as a constructor. What is happening? Okay, my system is kind of freezing up. So for now, I'm going to just go to right click, right click and choose source and choose generate constructor using fields. The next thing we need to do is to generate the getters and the setters. Again, I'm going to right click at this point and go to source and say generate getters and setters. Select everything and just say generate. So we build the POJO, we build this class, but it's good to always have a default constructor. So just add it probably our uh, user. So these are default constructor, a constructor with no parameters at all. So it's called no arguments constructor. Also annotate this class with an entity annotation. So it's going this at entity annotation tells Hibernate that this class is used for ORM or that this class maps to a table in the database. Of course, these tables will be created automatically for us. And for the primary key, you specify it by saying at ID on top of the primary key. So to clarify, let me just shift this. So it tells us that ID 
is a primary key. Control Shift O on your keyboard, and you have the necessary namespaces imported. So we've completed for user. I'm going to go to post for now. So I'm going to start with adding an entity annotation. What is happening to me today? So I'm going to say private integer ID and private we have name so string name okay and we add the constructors right click and go to source actually spring tool suit makes it very easy generate constructors using fields and say generate and we generate the getters and the ciphers right click and say uh, source and go to generate getters and ciphers right here and select everything and just say generate all right so again we add an, a default constructor that has no arguments so public post and okay we have it control shift o on your keyboard to add in the necessary namespaces or the necessary import statements let's not forget to put the at id annotation right here what happened okay all right so there we go so everything is ready for the posts um for the post and finally we is it for the post ah uh, i think let's see location okay no so posts should have much more than this so post you have id post date user and details so let's quickly correct it so let me just delete So post you have ID, ID post dates, local date time. So if you are working with dates, use local dates time post dates. Then for user, so it's gonna be private user user and details private string details okay so this is what we have control shift on your keyboard okay hope you are not missing out anything uh yeah so let's see so take out this okay so let's add the constructor by right clicking and choose uh source and see generate constructors using fields and just to generate and the next one is to generate getters and setters so just right click as well and go to source and say generate getters and sectors, select everything and just say generate. Alright. So add a default constructor as well. So public public post. So we've added a default constructor or no argument constructor. Let's now check we've completed users. You can see user, not users. We've completed posts and now let's go to location. So private integer ID and private string name. Okay. And annotate this with the at ID annotation. And generate the constructor, right click and just say source and just say generate constructor using fields and just say generate. And the next thing you want to do is to generate your getters and the ciphers. So right click and say um, choose source and just say generate getters and ciphers right here. Select everything and say generate. So we have our getters and ciphers. But finally, let's just add a default constructor public location. And we have a default constructor right now. All right, so we have all the posts on all our models built. I will not forget to put the at entity annotation at this point. All right. So let me just cross check. We have the user, we have the post. All right, fine. So let me save everything. Let's now go back to follow the remaining steps. So we've completed the first part that says 
create the Spring application, create the three classes corresponding to the posts, uh, user and location, and put them in the models package. We've done that. Create the repositories in the repositories package. A repository is an interface that kind of connects the database. So let's create the repositories. So I'm going to right click and say new, new interface. And I'm going to create a new package called repositories. So to create a new package, just attach the name of the package to the whole, the, the, the base package, as you can see. So I'm going to call this location repository. So location repository, that is fine. So you can see it's an interface and then we create user repository. Now our repository actually extends, this repository have to extend the crowd repository. And we are going to add that extends uh, statement after now. Again, the repository have to be annotated with add repository annotation. Here we are, we are going to add a post. All right, so everything is fine. So you can see all the repositories are there in the repositories package. So at this point, I'm going to add repo Z3, and then I'm going to add extends. So extends crawl repository makes it possible to have the methods that are already defined for insert, select, update and delete. We have to, we don't have to write this explicitly. It's already provided for us in the crawl repository. So when we extend the crawl repository, we have access to all these methods for free and it makes life so easy. So at this point, you need to specify the name of the class or the entity you are working with. Yeah, this repository is going to be working with or the entity, the table this repository connects with, if you will. So in this case, the table is post and the primary key type will be specified. The primary key type on this post is integer. Okay, so control shift over my keyboard and everything is fine. So please allow me to just copy at least copy this and paste on the other ones just to save time. So let's do it for location. So I'm going to just paste it right here, Control V. And this, in this case, I'm changing it to location because we are now working with location. I'm going to say a triple Z3. Uh, okay, so everything should be fine. All right, so repository, perfect. And finally, we go to user. I'm going to add the extends. So in this case, we have user. And we also add the art repository annotation as well. So hopefully everything is fine. Uh, I would like to recommend if you have challenges, pause the video or rewind it and make sure you don't make any mistakes. At the end of each module, try to cross-check that you don't make no mistakes because it's very painful that at the end of the day, the application doesn't run and you have to backtrack all the way. So at this point, we've created our, all our repositories. The next thing is to create our services. Services connect to the repository. Repository connects to the database. That is how it works. So a service is a layer on top of the repository. So I'm on top of the repository. So I'm going to say new. I'm going to create a class. Services are just classes. So I'm going to start with location service. So I want to put it in the services package. So I'm going to come here and say dot services. So location service in the services package. So I'm going to say okay. And the next one is the user service. Again, it's in the services package as well. I'm going to say OK. And um, finally, the post service. Now the service uh, class or the service file need to be annotated with the at service annotation. So I'm going to say at. What happens? So I'm going to undo this. OK. Sometimes you, you are too fast and you make some mistakes. So you need to be smart to know when you make some mistakes and then you quickly correct it. So I'm going to copy this from here. I'm going to paste it in location. And 
and also I'm going to do this here and save everything okay so finally we need to create the controllers uh, the controllers of uh, the con uh, the rest controller because the rest controller allows you to that when a request is made from the browser it's going to hit the rest controller so the rest controller de de defines methods that are called when a request a http request is made from the browser from a http endpoint so that is why we need a uh, controller so i'm going to first create controllers also are classes in, in in java so i'm going to start with user controller and I'm going to put them in controllers package. So I'm creating a new package at this point, user controller. I'm going to create another controller called location controller. So all these things we are doing is called the setup. So once we set up, it becomes a bit easy to, to fly. So uh, location controller. And finally, I'm going to create uh, post controller. All right, so a controller, as you may have thought, is annotated with the at control at rest controller annotation. A controller, normal controller, is different from rest controller. This is mistake that new programmers make. But this time we are talking about rest controllers. A rest controller is used for handling rest API requests. So this is not a UI application, but a rest API. So I'm going to say rest controller. Okay, control shift on my keyboard. So I'm going to do the same for the other two. So I'm going to copy these to the location controller. Location controller and user controller as you know this user entity. User controller. Yeah. Alright, so save everything. Now we've completed the setting up. We've set up everything we need. To be able to continue in Hibernate. Every other thing we are going to be doing will be based on all these files that we've created. So I'd like to thank you for viewing. Don't give up. If it's challenging, don't give up. Try to overcome your challenges. Try to ask for support by leaving a comment for me. Tell me your challenges and I'm going to give you the needed support. If you've not subscribed, hit the subscribe button below so that we, do, we can do this together and you don't miss an update. If this video is informative for you, like it and also share it around if you have some friends that may benefit from this from these lessons. So we see in part three.